afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for the 16th day of January, and it is Saturday, and today's topic will be titled Home, so a simple topic uh, titled Home, so we'll get into that topic here in a few minutes, but first, uh, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, <clears throat> and hope and pray that you've Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, and he will save your soul if you have not done so already. Amen. All right, so let's get started with today's scripture song, and it is from Psalm 73, verses 24 through 25. So let me press play here on the CD. <clears throat> All right. Amen. Psalms 73, 24 through 25. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Thou <coughs> shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Thou shalt me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. All right, I got a little rough start on that one, but uh, we'll try that again a couple more times towards the end of the broadcast. And now let's go ahead and go to the fifth day of the month. Uh, and let me go back there to January 5th. <clears throat> and we'll sing this scripture song from Psalm 143, verse 10. Amen. Psalms 143, 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Amen. Teach me to do thy will. Thou art my God. Thou teach me to do thy will. Thou spirit is good. Teach me to do thy will. Lead me to the land of a brightness. back to today's and we'll sing these a couple more times towards the end of the broadcast but now, excuse me but now it's time to dive into today's topic again it is titled home and we have two different passages here the first is from first samuel 2 20 and it says and eli blessed El elkanah and his wife and said the lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord, and they went unto their own home. First Samuel two two twenty, and the second passage is from John twenty verse ten. It says, "Then the disciples went away unto their own home." And the author today is G G. That is the initials for uh, Brother Guy Goodall, and he is a pastor of Bible Baptist church in Hudson Falls, New York. So let me read what Brother Goodall wrote today on this topic of home. He said, home, a word which can engender either a positive or negative array of thoughts. He says, I once returned home 
from a two-week vacation, it was a positive sensation. As I drove, uh, as I drove the interstate, he says, I kept thinking, I am going home. As I turned down our street, I began looking for the house. As we entered the driveway, I said to the family, home again. In Second Corinthians 5, 6, Paul says, whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Right. However, one day, you and I, who know the Lord, will be called home, amen, to our real home, where Jesus said he was going to prepare a place for us. And it says, see John 14, 2. So let's go ahead and go to John 14, 2. I'm sure most of you all know what this passage says, but let's go ahead and read it. John 14, verse 2. All right, we get there. <clears throat> so John 14 and verse 2. So let's go ahead and read verse 1, where it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. So I read a couple extra verses there to give you the context of what he's talking about. Uh, uh, he's preparing a place for us, and one day he's going to call us home. Amen. All right, continuing on, he says, As we travel the world's highways, keep thinking, I am going home. Amen. And uh, um, Seminole String Band, uh, uh, <clears throat> they have a good song uh, titled I'm Going Home and uh, you can go look that up on YouTube I believe it's up there on the uh, the YouTube page it's titled I'm Going Home it's a good little song there and uh, so it says as we travel the world's highways keep thinking I'm going home the twists and turns on life's streets and lanes cause us to think about home one day the house uh, one day the house not made with hands will appear as we leave this old house of clay and enter the special home Jesus has made for us. Then we can say, as we enter heaven's gates, home at last. Amen. <clears throat> How are you going with me? He asks. Oh, so are you? Hope you are. I know I am. Amen. Trust in Jesus my Savior, so I know I'll be going uh, up there to be with the Lord. Amen. When he calls us home. Amen. Hope you... You will too. So he asks, are you going with me? Have you seen your need as a sinner? And have you trusted Christ as your Savior? It is so simple. Even a child can trust the Lord, or trust our Lord. So he says, it is so simple. Even a child can trust our Lord, whose blood was shed to wash away our sins. And he says in big, bold letters, uh, big, bold, black letters, he says, come home with me. Amen. So yes, let's go home and be with the Lord, whether he calls us up in the rapture or you pass from this earth and go be with him before the rapture. Amen. Uh, let's go home to be with Jesus one day. Amen. And so hopefully that day will be today. You never know. He could call us home today. So uh, be ready. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So that is the end of the topic of home and so if you haven't trusted jesus well today is the day to do so and then you can go home and be in heavenly places with the rest of us have trusted jesus amen all right so that is the end of today's baptist bread devotional topic and now it's time to uh get into chapter three from the victorious christian living book on the topic of the fall and rise of king david and this book was written by Brother James Knox. And you can find this book on the church website at www.jameswknox.org. And so we've gone through the introduction and then the first two chapters already. And now it's time to get into chapter number three. And it says here as we start out, Second Samuel eleven two says, And it came to pass in an even tide, evening tide, that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. 
Second Samuel 11, 2. When Brother James starts out here, as he writes, and I'll read to you what he says. He says, Many suggestions have been made that are not stated in the text, implying that David or the woman or both had some intent here. I see uh, none of that written in the scripture, he says. Uh, what the word of God says is that while walking upon his rooftop, David saw a woman. Such is not a sinful act. In an instantaneous glance, he could have and would have been aware that she was bathing without time uh, to process, accept or reject the thought. He would have made a determination as to her appearance. All of this falls within the realm of ordinary human conduct on the part of a man. It cannot be a sin to see nor to make judgment regarding what is seen or else we would all need to be blinded. However, he says, however, the man failed to follow up the sight of his eyes with the necessary response. The order, not yet written, but surely understood, is as follows. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians 10.5 <clears throat> The moment this man set his eyes upon a woman, uh, not his wife, the moment he beheld a bathing beauty, was the time at which he had to capture that thought and subject it to the righteousness of God, or else fall into sin. It is, a, it is at this point, and only at this point, that one may be victorious. Any hesitation on the part of the man any lingering gaze, any pondering in the heart, and defeat is assured. Hmm. That is true. <clears throat> sure. All right. So going on to pay the next page, it says, First Corinthians ten thirteen puts it this way: There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. David's trials, yours and mine, are not exceptional but ordinary <clears throat> but god is faithful this or this not only speaks to his praise but to our shame for it implies that we are not faithful right uh, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able so the woman was not too beautiful the situation not too demanding but well with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Each time we sin, we had the ability to avoid it. Right. The key word in that last phrase is with. At the time of temptation, there is a, a way out. Any move that is made in the direction of sin puts us past the uh, way of escape. When David did not immediately turn his eyes away, cleanse his heart and mind, and leave the roof. Things were set in motion that likely could not be stopped. Uh, then, with, uh, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. James one fifteen. Lust must be put to death the moment it emerges. If it is allowed any life, it will produce sin, and all sin will pay off in some form of death. <clears throat> Ouch, yikes. Every day of your life and mine, our eyes will behold that which carries with it the opportunity to yield to fleshly lusts and engage in some sin or another. We must train ourselves to instantly deal with the thoughts before they become second thoughts, then plans, <clears throat> then schemes, then sins, then cover-ups, then death. It is at the initial moment that these great battles are won or lost. Mine eye also is dim by reason of sorrow, and all my members are as a shadow. Job 17.7 7. The condition of our heart affects our vision. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mine eye aff affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Lamentations 351. 
Our vision affects the condition of our heart. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew 5.28 Our heart may be instantly corrupted by what we behold. And if thine eye affect thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Mark 9.47 the strongest of measure, uh, measures must be taken to prevent this from happening. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 6, nine, Where the heart is kept pure, we may look without lust. <clears throat> for all this, excuse me, for all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. 1 John 2.16 But an impure heart turns even the gift of sight into a path of unrighteousness. There are those having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. 2 Peter 2.14 The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single... Thy whole body also is full of light, but when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Luke 11.34 There are many wondrous things to behold as we enjoy God's creation. Amen. There are many things we see each day which will no longer meet our gaze once heaven is our home. It is not the ability to see nor the beholding which is the problem. Sin results when the heart and mind do not respond properly to that which we behold. Let us learn from David's fall to quickly turn our eyes from that which we should not see, and to make all haste to keep ourselves free from inward defilement by reigning in all the improper thoughts provoked by something we have looked upon. Mm. And that is the end of chapter 3. So let us take heed to that, watch our eyes, and make sure that we cast uh, all those imaginations and stuff to the Lord. And we see something that, uh, that uh, catches our eye, that we take that immediately to the Lord and repent of it and turn our eyes away from it instead of playing around with it and then it becoming sin and getting the best of us. Amen. So... There you have it. That is the end of chapter 3. And Lord willing, tomorrow, cover chapter 4 of the fall and rise of King David. And let's see, uh, not sure how many chapters there are of this. I mean, there are 18 parts to this lesson, so we are on part 4. So, amen. All right, well, that uh, will end it for that uh, part of our broadcast. And now it's time to sing today's scripture song again and then we'll do the one from the fifth so let me get back to today's from the 16th and we'll try this again amen <clears throat> all right psalms 73 24 to 25 thou, thou shalt guide, guide me with thy, thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory who have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Amen. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the uh, fifth, and we'll sing that one more time, and then we'll end it with today's. 
Alright, let me go back to page here. A couple pages back. Alright. Let's try this one again. Psalms 143.10 Amen. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Amen. Here we go. Let's try this again. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Teach me to do thy will, thy spirit is good. Teach me to do thy will, lead me to the land of a brightness, thou art my God, for thou art my God. Amen. Is he your God? Amen. He's my God. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go back and do today's one more time, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so today's, right, press play there. Psalms 73, 24 and 25. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Amen. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth. That I desire beside thee. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. All right, well, that'll about end it for today's broadcast, but. As always, before I go, let me go ahead and give you tomorrow a scripture song and then the Baptist Bread devotional topic for tomorrow, which is the 17th. And tomorrow will be Psalms 144.15. It says, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. And then we'll do a review scripture song from the 6th. And that will be one Psalm one forty five eighteen, and it says uh, in this Psalm, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth, Amen. So those will be tomorrow's scripture songs, the uh, one for tomorrow, and then the review, Amen. So that will be tomorrow uh, for the scripture songs, and then tomorrow's topic will be titled in. Uh, circulation so in circulation and the passage is from matthew ten thirty one b the second part of verse 31 of matthew chapter 10 amen so that will be tomorrow's devotional uh and then of course we'll cover uh chapter four from the fall and rise of king david in the victorious christian living book from brother james knox and uh if you'd like to uh, get a copy of this book or look up uh, one of his other books that he's written He's got plenty that he's written, and you can find them all on the church website at www.jameswnox.org. So again, that's www.jameswnox.org, uh, and that's where you can find all these books and many sermons and other things. Amen. And then, of course, if you'd like to get uh, a box of these devotionals, you can do so by going to... Brother Tim Green's website at www.timgreenministries.org. And of course, last uh, is the Scripture Songs website. Uh, Brother Dean and Sister Patty have their own website where they uh, put their Scripture Songs up. And 
You can go there by typing in www.dailyscripturesongs.com and you can read their prayer letter and pray for them and all missionaries around the world. Amen. So uh, that was all the information I have for all uh, three of those uh, things that I covered today in today's broadcast. So um, that'll about end it for today. So if you're just joining, you can go back and watch this in its entirety, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, you can uh, like and subscribe if you uh, have Facebook and uh, or if you have YouTube, you can watch it on there by going to my channel at Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or type in a keyword like Baptist Bread or Devotional or Scripture Song or something along those lines and look it up that way. And so uh, praise the Lord that uh, able to do this and hope it's a help and a blessing to you. All right, so until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. All right, Brother Scott signing off, so bye-bye for now and thanks for watching. And remember, only Jesus Christ can save your soul, so trust him today. Amen. All right, see you all next time, Lord willing. Bye for now.